you will see that you have permission from the DOD to try and find vulnerabilities on any publicly accessible information systems, web property or data owned, operated or controlled by the DOD. So you may say, this is awesome, Nar. I would love to get my hands dirty and try to ethically hack the DOD, but I have no idea how to do web app hacking. Don't worry, I've thought of that for you, and I have an excellent resource that you can use so that you can go ahead and get started. And let's try doing something like echoing, you have been pwned into a gotyou.txt. Sending over the request, we see now the same ping as before with the file contents of gotyou.txt being printed here, you have been pwned, as well as the list long details. What's up code crew? In this video, I'm going to be walking you through exactly how you can get started with web app hacking and even build yourself a bit of a reputation with the Department of Defense. Now here I have a website known as hackerone.com. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's a platform where you can either participate as a customer or a company to have ethical hackers, penetration testers, bug bounty hunters come and hack your website to find the bugs before the bad guys do. Now I do personally have a pending report. I have my fingers crossed as that would be my first official paid bounty. So I'm hoping that that one turns out to be lucrative so I can make a video about that and tell you guys exactly how I found it. But until then, I have still been spending quite a bit of time on here and I found something very interesting. So after you create an account and log in, you will see that there's different types of programs here on this opportunities page. There is bug bounty programs and then there's vulnerability disclosure programs and then there's private okay private you're, you're not going to see anything on private because you have to be invited for those okay your bug bounty programs your bbps are going to be paid opportunities this is going to be where you actually pick an organization you see what their scope is you try to find some bugs and then you report them fingers crossed the report ends up being legitimate and you get your monies right now, over here on the VDPs, there are no bounties that are going to be offered here. So this is basically like you doing God's work, right? You're just really just doing ethical hacking, maybe just doing it for your reputation. And the reason that you're probably here is because of the title of the video. You will see when you sort the programs by the most reports resolved, the top result is the United States Department of Defense which caught me by surprise, to be completely honest with you, coming into the details, you will see that you have permission from the DOD to try and find vulnerabilities on any publicly accessible information systems, web property or data owned, operated or controlled by the DOD. Now, of course, there's going to be some guidelines. There's going to be some things that you can't do, right? Like this is not an excuse for you to actually go and try and steal their information, trying to compromise the privacy or safety of the DOD personnel. So this is really just laying out very explicitly that you shouldn't test outside of your boundaries to prove a point or to create a proof of concept that this vulnerability exists. You can actually see right here, you will not do harm and will not exploit any vulnerability beyond the minimal amount of testing required to prove that a vulnerability exists or to identify an indicator related to a vulnerability. So for example, if, if you find out that there is some cross-site scripting, you won't go and actually try and use the cross-site scripting to steal tokens or cookies from an actual DOD personnel. You would just make your proof of concept, submit the report, and then you can get a nice addition to your resume that you ethically hacked the United States Department of Defense. Coming into the hacktivity, you will actually see there are reports that have been submitted within just the past week and they go down far 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 because remember they do have a total of 29,000 plus reports that have been resolved and just imagine right being able to say that you found a vulnerability on some of the public facing assets on the U.S. Department of Defense would make for a heck of an interview if you're looking to land yourself a high paying job or even just be the life of a party when you go to different hacker conventions. So you may say, this is awesome, Nar. I would love to get my hands dirty and try to ethically hack 
the DoD, but I have no idea how to do web app hacking. Don't worry, I've thought of that for you, and I have an excellent resource that you can use so that you can go ahead and get started. Now, down in the description of this video, you will see a link to a GitHub that will have this markdown file containing a command to set up your own damn vulnerable web application, your own DVWA. Now, I have talked about the DVWA a couple times on this channel, but we've never actually dived into it. So I figured this would be a good chance for us to go ahead and do that. Now, Docker is something that we use quite often on this channel. If you don't have it installed, be sure to watch the video first so you can see exactly how it's being used, and then you can go download it. But it's super easy to set up. Once you have it installed, go ahead, whip up a terminal, and just paste this command in. Now, I am running on the Windows machine. I do stick to Windows because I understand a lot of my audience is uh, beginners, and using Linux isn't always a thing that beginners have. So you'll notice when you put this command on the Windows machine, you may get this error that says that you have to prefix it using this win pty. So just go ahead and put that in and your Docker command will run no problem. So after this web app image has been pulled and run up, you will now see on your Docker desktop application, you will see that your web application is running on port 80, okay? So to open it, you can simply visit this site or click here and it'll automatically open up a window for you in your browser. So the DVWA, your dang vulnerable web application, does have a set of default credentials that is admin password. Go ahead and log in with those. And you'll be presented with a database setup page, which is going to be the button that you need to press to get everything going. You will see that there is some red on the page. Don't worry about this unless you're planning on doing the fourth set of labs in the file inclusion section, which is probably something you can worry about once you get to that point. But for the sake of this video, just keeping things simple, you can go ahead and ignore it and click Create and Reset Database. Upon doing so, you will get some success message and you will be redirected to the login page. Go ahead and put in the credentials of admin password. And notice that this time we have a different menu, a different navigation menu on the left hand side. I do recommend reading through the instructions here on this first page just so that you can be thorough. You don't need to read these instructions here. You can just go ahead and move on right forward into the first section of the labs. So just a quick overview, okay? The DVWA has different types of vulnerabilities that you can play with and learn. And on each of these vulnerabilities, there are a series of difficulty settings or security levels that you can set. So by default, you will see everything set to a security level of low. I would recommend going through all of them as low before you move it up to the medium and then to the high and then to the impossible. If you do wish to change those settings, you can come here to DVWA security and you'll see that you can change that setting here. But for now, just to keep things simple, keep things easy, I will keep it on low and let's proceed on into brute forcing. Now, what I love about this resource is that if you don't know what the vulnerability is, what it means, it will provide some links for you so you can go see what exactly this vulnerability entails. Notice it is quite a bit of reading, right? It's not as fun and mindless as doom scrolling, but I can assure you when you read through it, you will feel some, some good feelings in your brain as you learn this new material. And if reading this seems a little bit overwhelming to you, you know, I, I don't blame you. It, it does look like a lot. Don't be afraid to ask AI models like Grok, Claude, ChatGPT to explain what brute forcing or whatever vulnerability that you're playing with is to you. So brute forcing, keeping it super short and sweet, it's basically trying every possible combination of usernames and passwords until we get the success message, okay? So because this page is vulnerable to brute force, this implies a few things. It implies that there's no rate limiting. It implies that I can essentially try forever and ever, and the web server will just keep letting me try and never lock me out. So if we did admin, pass one, and try, no luck. If we did admin, pass two, and try, no luck. If we did admin, pass three, and we did admin, pass four, 
admin, pass five, admin, pass six. It hasn't locked me out. And I can just keep doing this over and over. You can even use tools to automate it if you choose. But the concept remains the same. This web app does not prevent me from brute forcing credentials at all. There's no rate limiting whatsoever. So eventually, upon trying and trying again, I may get lucky and guess the proper password, which in this case we already know is password, and we get a success with a welcome to the password protected area admin. You may say that was too easy. That's kind of the point. It's the first one on a security level of low, and you're always welcome to go change that so you can give yourself more of a challenge. Now, to look even deeper as to why this vulnerability exists, DVWA has here on the bottom right hand side this view source button. And there you can see the exact code that was used to create this vulnerable page. Noticing that this is actually a PHP script, we see a SQL database, as you can see here, as well as through the queries. There is some input from our parameters of the username and password being placed inside of here. And if the results match, we get back the account successful login. Notice that there is nothing in here that counts how many times the user has attempted to log in. Okay, it's just, just checks, just checks, just checks. Never looking to see if I've been there a thousand times before. So definitely make use of your view source after you have solved the lab. Let's go ahead and move on into one more. Here we have command injection. This one is, this one's pretty fun. So before we go on into how to exploit it, typically what you want to do is find out what is the intended usage. So here we see we enter an IP address and it will ping it for us. So let's just go ahead and try the DNS for Google, 8888. And there we see, we get back pretty much the raw terminal output from a ping on an IP address, right? And if you're unsure of that, you can just go ahead and pop open the command prompt and uh, just go ahead and do that on your own machine. And we'll see here the same format output pretty much, right? That we would see from our own terminal. So this is, this is curious because what if we were to try and chain other commands inside of this user input. So typically the chain commands, we can use things like semicolons or ampersands. So we'll go ahead and ping 8888. And let's also try to do a who am I? Notice that this time we see the same ping output, but now we actually see the username of the web server. So this is proven to us that this user input is not being sanitized at all. Anything I type will be placed directly into whatever shell command is running on that server side. Let's explore it a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and put in the 8888 and let's try doing something like echoing you have been pwned into a got you dot text and then we will cat open the got you dot text and to prove it even more i will even list out that file sending over the request we see now the same ping as before with the file contents of got you dot text being printed here you have been pwned as well as the list long details so you can kind of imagine at this point the types of commands that could be placed in here Let's go ahead and do one more. I'll go ahead and put in an IP address. And this time we will cat open our Etsy password. So the Etsy password on Linux machines is the file where usernames and user accounts are stored. And there we can see all of the different user accounts that are present on this Linux machine. I'm noticing that the only one that has a shell for me to log in on is over here on root. So that's a good nugget to have for an attacker as to knowing which accounts they can actually log into. All right, and then making sure that uh, we understand the most of why this vulnerability exists, we can come down here into view source. And here we see 
the PHP script. Notice that it's using our input and placing it into this variable and then putting that input directly into this shell execution function here. So there's no sanitization going on in there. There's no verifying that other commands are limited. It's really just raw input going directly into a shell execute. Looks like in this if statement here, the server is just checking to see what its own operating system is. And if the server is running on a Windows, it'll, it'll run this command. If the server is running on a Linux or a Unix type machine, it will run this command here along with the raw user input. So that is no bueno. So you can see how this resource, it's super fast to set up. It's really easy to get going. A lot of opportunity for you to learn and go through. They've basically put everything together for you to learn why and how these vulnerabilities exist, methods that you can use to test them, and then of course, the ability to test them at various levels of difficulty. And if you do all those things, you just might have a chance to go and find a vulnerability for the US Department of Defense. And with that guys, I hope you had a wonderful time. Don't forget to tell all your friends, smash like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.